All right, so you want to know how to choose your dream career, and most people never figure this out. And some that are lucky will figure it out after decades. But in this video, I'm going to show you how you can set yourself up for success by using what I like to call the 10 step regret minimization framework for choosing your dream career. And this is a framework where if you follow the steps in this video, you're pretty much guaranteed to find a career that you love. For some of you, you might know which one is right for you by the end of the video. And for others, it might take you a few months, but if you stay committed to this framework, you will eventually find your dream career. And the first step is you want to begin with the end in mind. And this is a recommendation from Stephen Covey in his book, Seven Habits of Highly Successful People. And basically what this means is you don't wanna choose the degree, you want to choose the career. And even more than that, you want to choose the skill that the career is going to teach you. And so you really want to choose a career that teaches you in-demand skills. And you want to have a nice mix of skills that are in-demand and modern and also evergreen skills. So a skill that's in-demand and modern, for instance, might be software development. And an evergreen skill might be something like operations management, marketing, or sales. And the way that I like to think about evergreen skills is I like to think if I learn this skill and I had a time machine and I went 1000 years in the past, would it still be useful? And if the answer to that is yes, then it's probably an evergreen skill. And when you combine evergreen skills and trending skills, you have a recipe for success. But the big problem with trending skills is a lot of them may be outsourced or automated, right? We have AI coming up and there's a lot of jobs that are unfortunately being eliminated because of it. And so the most important out of the two skills are going to be the evergreen ones. Because if you get really good at marketing, sales, or operations, it does not matter what happens in the economy or what happens with AI. Your skills are always going to be valuable. Now the career or the vehicle that you choose is going to be incredibly important. Choosing which industry you go into, choosing which career, choosing which college degree, if that's what you go for, and choosing the jobs that you apply for are incredibly important. You do not wanna go into a dead end career where there's no opportunity. You want to go where the opportunity is. And I know choosing the right career is incredibly difficult and there's a lot that goes into it. And so this weekend, I'm actually doing a live three day challenge where I will actually be interacting with everybody over Zoom. And I'm gonna be presenting exactly how to choose your dream career. I'm gonna be showing you a bunch of different skills that are valuable and presenting the best tips that I've compiled over years. Now, usually I charge 300 to $600 per hour for consultations, but I wanted to make something that's much more affordable than that and something that I can make a big impact and help a bunch of people with. So that's what I'm going to be doing this weekend. You can check that out down in the description as well as the pinned comment below. But I'm also going to be giving some tips on how to choose that career in this video. And the first one is don't follow your passion. Following your passion when it comes to a career is some of the worst advice that you can take. Be honest with yourself. If you really were to follow your passion, it would probably include eating Cheetos and playing first person shooter games like Call of Duty all day. And the truth is very, very few people can get paid to do that. There's not that many jobs out there that will let you do that. And the few people that are able to make money doing that are world-class professionals. This is unfortunately what colleges are promoting these days. They created a bunch of useless majors that do not lead people to being able to get jobs and people end up deep in debt and then they end up getting a job that they could have gotten probably without a college degree in the first place. Now, the second piece of advice, and this is the second worst thing that you could possibly do, is to purely follow the money. Making sure that you can actually get paid for what you do is important. But if that's purely the only thing you're doing it for, you're gonna set yourself up for failure as well. Tons of people become lawyers or doctors or engineers just for the money. And many of them end up not making it in the first place because it's actually really difficult to get into those careers. But the second thing is, those are the careers where it's obvious that they make good money. And any career like that where it's really well established is not not going to be the best opportunity. The careers with the best opportunities are the ones where there is not a beaten path, right? So there's not a very clear path for how to get into those careers. And typically the careers that have the best opportunity don't require college. So what should you do instead? Well, first of all, you want to play to your strengths. All of us were either born with or we developed strengths or skills at an early age that are things that we are much better at 
than most people. For some people, it might be creative skills. For some people, it might be that you're really good at organization. For others, you're really good at math. Or maybe you grew up and you had a natural affinity for selling things or computer programming. But the best thing to do is to play to your strengths because to other people, you are going to look like a wizard. But to you, it seems like it's easy. And this is the kind of situation that you want to get yourself into. So Naval Ravikant has a really good quote where he says, choose something where it seems like like work to others, but it feels like play to you. And research has shown that people grow to love or be passionate about things that they are good at. And this is something that Cal Newport details extensively in his book, So Good They Can't Ignore You. So ironically, the people who go for their passion over 95% of their time end up hating their job. And the people who go for a job that's something that they're naturally good at much more often end up loving it. And the next thing you want to do and you want to keep in mind is to give value to others. So Zig Ziglar has a really good quote where he says, if you give other people what they want, you will get anything that you want. And this is really the mindset that you wanna have because in evolution, we basically evolved in villages of about 100 to 200 people, right? So we were in these small tribes and everybody in the tribe helped each other out. Now in modern times, things aren't really like this anymore. We're kind of in a tribe of like what, seven or 8 billion people now, but our minds still work the same way. We are naturally programmed to want to help other people who are in our tribe. And so this weird, selfish, narcissistic, like follow your passion thing that keeps getting parroted over and over again is not the natural way of things. Instead, you should seek to help other people out and in return, you will be helped. And I can assure you from firsthand experience that giving value to other people is much more meaningful than just trying to seek out dopamine, right? Just doing whatever you're passionate about, constantly trying to seek out dopamine is kind of a degenerate way to live your life. You'll just want more and more dopamine until eventually there's no more dopamine to be had. And then you'll just feel kind of empty and depressed, right? So what you want to do instead is seek first to help other people and you will be helped in return. And this ties back into the first point that I mentioned, which is go where the opportunity is. So let's use the tribal example again. So you're in a tribe of 200 people and you're 16 years old and you're trying to figure out what you're going to do in the tribe. And there's 20 fishermen and there's only one farmer. And the fishermen are all extremely extremely good at their job. It will take you probably five to 10 years to even get close to their level. So on a scale of like one to 100, if it's a video game, for instance, they're all at least 80 out of 100. Whereas the farmer is only a level 20 out of 100 because he's doing something that not that many other people have been doing. So he's having to figure it all out on his own. And so it'd be much easier for you to get to his level. You could probably do it within like a year than if you tried to become a master fisherman. And the truth is if a crocodile ate one of the fishermen one day, there'd still be like 19 more. So realistically speaking, the tribe wouldn't miss them that much. Ouch, that hurts. Whereas if the farmer one day got eaten by a bear, that winter they wouldn't have any grain and half the tribe would probably starve. So in this particular case, the smart move is to go where the opportunity is and learn how to become a farmer. And the same exact situation basically is happening in the modern world as well. Society tries to push you into certain careers like doctor or lawyer. And don't get me wrong, these careers are okay but by definition, because of the fact that they're so well established, they are going to be mediocre at best. And the careers that aren't as well established are where the real opportunity is. So the vehicle that you choose is so important and you want to choose a career where there's a ton of opportunity. Because when you choose a career like that, you're gonna make more money, you're gonna be more well-respected, you're also going to have more freedom and autonomy, and you're probably going to enjoy the career more as well. And this ties into the next point, which is basically the most gigabrain cheat code thing that you can possibly do, which is get paid to learn in-demand skills. Now, the best thing about these skills that are so in-demand is you can actually get paid to learn them because the barrier to entry is so low, right? The farmer only was level 20 out of 100, whereas the fisherman had to be at least level 80 out of 100. So it's much easier to learn the basics and get your foot in the door when it comes to these in-demand skills. And once you've chosen the career, you want to move on to the next Next point, which is choose a job that gives you value, right? So there's many different forms of value. And the first one that everybody always thinks of is pay. And don't get me wrong, pay is very important, but there are 
many other things that you should consider. For instance, benefits, good lifestyle, the ability to work remote, getting paid to learn valuable skills, opportunities for promotion. And even if you want to eventually start a business, 99% of the time, it's better off to start with a job. And I honestly don't think I've met a single successful business person who didn't start off with a job. A lot of the time, they'll start off with a job that teaches them in-demand skills. And in many cases, they will use their job in order to fund their business when they're first getting it off the ground. So in some cases, it might be good to find a job that's relatively chill so that you have a lot of free time or a job that pays you really well so you can spend a bunch of that money on your business. So yeah, it's very important to choose jobs that give you value. And value is going to be different depending on the person. So for some of you, you might be in a season of your life where you don't really care about getting paid all that much. You kind of just want a remote job where they'll let you go and travel the world, for instance. And if you can get a job that pays you $2,000 a month and it's fully remote, you can live like a king in a country like Thailand or the Philippines. Now, the next point on this list is you want to avoid making irreversible decisions. And another way of saying this is you want to stay as flexible as possible. So Jeff Bezos talks about his framework for decision making. And the way he explains it is there are two different types of decisions. And basically he explains it like there's two different types of doors. There's doors that when you go out, you can come back in. And then there's some doors where when you go out, the door is locked and you can't come back in anymore. And so if you are going to make a decision where it's basically irreversible, you really want to think about it a lot. And generally speaking, you want to try to avoid making those decisions if possible. And one great way to do this is to learn a skill that is flexible. There's certain skills that are incredibly flexible where you can use them in just about any industry, any company, and many different careers out there. So an example of these types of skills are going to be marketing, sales, operations, and basically any type of technology related skill. An example of an irreversible decision would be going to med school or law school. This is something that you really want to think about because it's going to take up many years of your life, a ton of your time and effort, and also it's going to cost you a ton of money. Now, the next point on the list is for people who don't really have any idea what they like or what they're good at, and that is to try new things. So if you have no clue what you like or what you're good at, that's probably because you haven't done that many things. So go out there, do a bunch of research, look at a bunch of different websites, shadow people, talk to people in different careers, ask your family members, ask your friends. And it's very easy or cheap to try out a bunch of different skills online. So for instance, if you think you might be interested in software development, there's lots of different free sites out there where you can get trained on how to do it. And if you really hate it, chances are that's not something you should do. And the next one on the list is pretty obvious, but I feel like I have to state it, and that is do your research. A lot of people choose a career based on what their family wants them to do, or what popular culture says they should do, or maybe they just think a TV show is really cool, so they choose to become a doctor or a nurse because of a TV show. As silly as that is, a lot of people make decisions like that, and you definitely don't wanna do that. Instead, you want to make sure to do your research because pop culture, TV, and society tend to romanticize certain careers. So the expectation and the reality are going to be completely different. So obviously, in a single video, I can't go in depth on any of these things, and that's why I'm doing this three-day live event this week Weekend, so I highly recommend checking that out. And again, it'll be down in the description as well as the pinned comment below. I'll be there live to answer any questions that you have. But in the meantime, check out this video on remote jobs that are always hiring by clicking right here.